Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing greatest of all time goat scents for spring. These are personal favorites of mine and this, this isn't a top 10. This isn't a review. This isn't a recommendation. This is just me sharing my favorite and the best scents for spring that I have found over the course of forever, <laughs> at least for as long as I've been collecting and wearing fragrances, the fragrances that I've just fell in love with wearing around springtime, since spring is right around the corner, I thought I would share my favorites with you. So let's get into the video. If I have reviews of any of these fragrances, I don't think I have reviews of every single one, or if I reference any previous videos, I will link them below. I do not want this video to be insanely long, so I'm going to try not to, but if I think that there is any pertinent information, I will talk about it. This isn't going to be like one of those concise top 10 lists. If you're familiar with my channel, I do like to chat. I am going to try to keep this video on the shorter side. The other thing is, is that this is going to be fragrances that I wear. And if you know me, I have a variety of different tastes when it comes to fragrances. We're not just talking about florals, but there is a very uh, floral theme, obviously spring. I do live in Florida. I, when I first started collecting fragrances, in fact, for most of my life, except for the past three years, I lived in South Florida, which is tropical swampy weather. And now I live in Northern Central Florida, which for half of the year is tropical swampy weather. So that does play a huge role in the types and styles of fragrances that I wear. I always like to mention too, that I don't quite look at the camera, because if I look at the camera, I have to really focus on this little area and it gives me migraines. Like I feel like every video, someone's like, you're not looking at the camera. I know, I'm sorry. I'm just getting that out of the way until people stop uh, me mentioning it. Also today we are showing off the birdie and not the wizard, the birdie. But if the wizard comes out, uh, it, you know it's a good magical time. The other thing, the other thing is uh, most of these fragrances were purchased. Um, some of them were PR, but that does not play any at all in any way in why these are part of this list. Just because something was given to me does not mean that it made it part of this list. Uh, it just means that I love it. But most of these fragrances were purchased. And some of these fragrances I've never mentioned on this channel before, or I've only mentioned in passing once or twice. So I will talk about those. And at the end of the video, I will mention the top three, my favorites, and kind of explain why. The first one I think is probably one of the best and one that I like to wear. It's part of a collection of fragrances that I just love. It's Elizabeth Arden. This is green tea, specifically mimosa. I could wear any of the green tea fragrances I own all of them minus one or two. I think I need to buy the newest one. If you guys are not familiar with my channel, goodness, I love Elizabeth Arden Green Tea and Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Flankers. I think this is a tremendously beautiful fragrance and fragrance line. Full retail price, you can find these for like 40 to 50 bucks and you can find them ridiculously cheap gray market and just beautiful fragrances, especially if you love tea scents. If you're not familiar with my thoughts on tea scents, again, referenced videos linked in the description box below. But my love for Elizabeth Arden Green Tea is just, I adore it. And Green Tea Mimosa is such a beautiful workhorse of a spring scent, especially from spring to summer when the transitional beautiful springtime goes into the humidity oppressively dense weather of southern Florida humidity, which is gross and I hate it and it's nasty, but just a beautiful scent. It smells really good. It's just very effervescent and sparkly and just has something about it that's also very clean and fresh. 
and as a springtime scent, it is a workhorse. Now, most of the Elizabeth Arden fragrances I can drown myself in. I will be an oversprayer if the fragrance allows it. However, this one can be suffocating <laughs> if I overspray. Thus, I have a smaller bottle of it, and also thus, it does not look like I've touched it. This is a one spritzer for me, but it is one of my favorite and more of a utilitarian spring scent. Another fragrance that is a one spritzer and I love, and this one I'm not gonna say is polarizing, but a lot of people kind of turn their nose at this fragrance. At least a lot of people who consider themselves fragrance elitists or fragrance snabs. I'm not saying any of you guys are, but sometimes like in specific fragrance like groups or chats or things like that, people are like, oh, I can't believe you wear that or I can't believe you like that. And this is kind of going into like the niche versus designer versus expensive versus inexpensive versus celebrity versus like there's there's a lot of turf warfare going on. And this particular fragrance and some of its flankers, I think there's like one or two flankers. I don't know much about the other fragrances that are a part of this family. I think there might be one or two flankers. I could be wrong and I probably am. So feel free to educate me, the comment section below. But this particular fragrance, I spray one of and I love it because it's clean and fresh and classic. It's a very dated fragrance, but in a very positive way, very mature scent. And it's from the Perfumers Workshop and it's Tea Rose. And this is one of my favorite spring scents. Now this again is a one, one spray, one, one spritz. I, I can't overspray this. Oh no, 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 no. But as a favorite fragrance for spring, as a goat scent for spring, this is, I love. Because to me, this smells like the most beautiful, like hand soap, perfumed hand soap. And there's something about the way that that smells that I just find to be so gorgeous and so luxurious. So growing up, for me, the height of luxury was those beautiful decorative soaps that were like pressed with these beautiful floral designs that had those very elegant and very, very heavily perfumed scents of like gardenia and honeysuckle and jasmine and rose. And like you'd wash your hands with them or you have those little bath bombs, or not bath bombs, but those little bath bubbles and they were filled with the bath oil and then you put them in your bath and then they would kind of, kind of turn into a mush. <laughs> they they wouldn't quite dissolve but then your whole bath would kind of smell like rose and then you have this like really dense rose smelling bath oil. And that was the height of luxury for me and to me still is, I love it. And springtime is when I would take a lot more baths cause that's when I was doing a lot more activities outside cause summer was a little bit too hot. And so like this smell is very much like a springtime scent for me. And this just captures that beautifully, just kind of opulent, dated, but not in a bad way, in a nostalgic, almost retro aesthetic way. I love it. So as a floral for spring, this isn't that fizzy, bubbly, youthful, decadent bouquet of flowers. This is a very dense, dated, beautiful rose that has that kind of oily bath soap opulence to it that some people just don't like and I love and it is one that I love but not not more than one spray oh no even maybe just half a spritz but it's really beautiful and I do really enjoy it. I know I told you guys that I was trying gonna try and make this video not too long and the first Two fragrances I've talked to where I'm looking at my little timer up there on my iPad. We're at 25 minutes. I'm gonna have to cut this down. We're, we're just, these are more workhorse fragrances. If I have reviews of them, I'll link them up. They're great. So I have Jill Malone Wild Bluebell. Love it. It does not last on my skin more than like, I feel like 10 minutes, but I love it. Um, I've talked about that fragrance a bunch. 
I love the fragrances from Demeter, specifically Earl Grey Tea is one of my favorites to wear in springtime. That bergamot nut, specifically in this fragrance, pulls a little bit creamy on my skin. And it's one of the fragrances I really like to wear a lot and layer a lot. And I'll probably do a springtime layering favorite video. I know layering and blending fragrances is a bit of a polarizing, um, conversation but i know you guys like this video so i'll those share those are the workhorse fragrances now those are also the the cheaper the more inexpensive the more accessible i do have some fragrances that you wouldn't expect to be part of my greatest of all springtime fragrances and i wanted to share those next stereotypical springtime fragrance would be but ones that i love uh, we have number 18 from Chanel. This is the Eau de Parfum version, but I do greatly love the Eau de Toilette, but in my opinion, the Eau de Parfum is good as well. This is one that I've worn a bunch, actually. This is from Imaginary Authors, Slow Explosions. Look, I've worn a bunch of this. There has been a bit of evaporation with this too, I will not lie but just a bit. I wear this one in spring a lot. This is another workhorse fragrance for me, but I like how this is kind of cozier and the the woods in this are more of like a sour aromatic woods on my skin, specifically with the leather and the apple, and that works so beautifully in spring on my skin. It's a different composition than sparkly florals for spring that I've just been kind of craving and always seem to crave. So Slow Explosions has been one as a leather lover. Um, I wear a lot and Sultan from Royal Crown as you know, this one's beautiful. This one's gorgeous. This is one of my favorite woods. Love cedar wood. Love how this smells burnt and kind of charred and sweet. It's gorgeous. But sometimes I found in when it's like super cold, the wood pulls a little bit more mentholy. And as much as I like that, I prefer this more when it's not so frigid and more brisk. So fall, it's beautiful and almost perfect. But I almost find I like it better in spring. Like, I don't know why, but this has been like a springtime like reach because again, I'm wearing a lot of florals. There's a lot of sparkly, effervescent, uh, fizzy, bubbly flowers around me, which again is fantastic and I love, but having something different has been nice. And so burnt aromatic woods have been great. And this one has just been performing gorgeously from the transition from winter to spring. So that one um, has become one of my most favorites. And actually another one that you wouldn't think would fit more because again, this could easily be a greatest of all time summer fragrance. But I find this to be a little bit too rancid, <laughs> rancid for summer. And when I show you this, you'll be like, oh, okay, I understand that fragrance, duh. Um, it's Pulp from Pyreto. So this one is a polarizing uh, fragrance from the house because a lot of people don't like this because it smells like an orange that's kind of fallen off the tree and has just been sitting in the sun for weeks. It's kind of like that level of what I mean by rancid. Like it's kind of sitting there, you, you don't, eat that orange that's on the ground. It's kind of gone past its prime. But the way that that smells, that kind of almost like, not that it's indelic, but that kind of like past its prime. It's not safe to eat. Citrus, it's more warm, it's more creamy type of citrus that this has. It's a little bit sour, it's a little bit, um, Again, it's not green. It's like a soury wood type of smell that it has. It's like, again, it's it's not a bright citrus. It's not even a tangy, zesty. It's not even like a bitter citrus. It's, there's a reason why not everybody likes this fragrance. I understand why it's polarizing because, again, it does kind of smell like a 
uh, a type of slightly moldy orange and you're going to be like why the heck is she a putting her face on youtube and talking about perfume she's horrible at this and a why would anybody want to wear this but they're again kind of like when you eat cheeses that are like blue cheeses and you're like i don't understand why people eat that and then you eat it and you're like oh wow this has a depth of flavor the same thing with like especially citruses can have a wide variety of depth and complexity not just with way different citruses can smell like mandarins and bergamot and grapefruit and lemon and orange and things like that. It's how they can smell. Are they bright? Are they citrusy? Are they sweet? Are they creamy? Things like that. But a beautiful way that citruses can smell is slightly turned and kind of like how woods can be slightly sour. Again, that's more of an aromatic quality, not like it's bad. It's like a bitter quality. It's like a slightly sour quality. That makes something on the skin really beautiful and that works really well in this fragrance. And that sourness gets a little bit too much in summertime, but in spring it's just gorgeous. So again, I do really love this fragrance for the summer, but in super humid summer it kind of smells like you're in an orange grove and nobody's been taking care of the orange grove and all the oranges are on the ground and there's too many flies and oh my goodness. But in springtime, it's really beautiful and it smells intentional. And that's what I like is I like deliberate intention with my fragrances and there's something about it that's conceptual and beautiful. And that's what people kind of sometimes I feel miss from the House of Pyrito. And it's a polarizing fragrance and it's one of my favorites for spring. And I'm talking way too much, but Yes. Another one that is, I wouldn't say it's polarizing, but it's more of a conceptual spring fragrance is Koala from Zoologist. This one blew me away when I smelled it. Again, it's that eucalyptus. It's a little medicinal and I just, I love it. I love this fragrance so much. It's one of my favorites from the house. And for spring, again, if you want something that is not, again, sparkly flowers, and sometimes, again, I love sparkly flowers, and we're going to go into the florals next. But uh, one I've been wearing for spring, again, one spritz, and it's just been beautiful. Before we go into my top three, we're going into five just florals, flowers. Uh, flowers for spring, how groundbreaking. Yeah, I know, but these are great. First one is Kazemi from House of Matriarch. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous rose fragrance. You guys know about my thoughts on House of Matriarch, how much I love House of Matriarch. I collect House of Matriarch, I've given that woman way too much of my money or not enough money, depending on what I think. I don't own every bottle and I keep meaning to buy more, but then I keep remembering I need to drop like $15,000 on a UV laser, a uh, whole other conversation. Um, but another fragrance that if you are familiar with my channel, um, if you've been following me almost from the very beginning, I've talked about this fragrance forever, it's Erin Rose de Grasse. This is one of the most beautiful rose fragrances ever created in my opinion. Now Erin as a house I find as a designer house is underappreciated and some of their fragrances are, they're fine. I'll buy them. They're good. They're great. They they perform pretty well. They're not inspiring, but their price point is pretty good for what they are. I smell them. They smell really good. They perform pretty well. Um, there's nothing groundbreaking about them, but Rose de Grasse has been just a stunner of a scent for rose lovers. It's absolutely beautiful. There's a clarity to it. There's a sweetness I to it. it. Love me some jammy rose fragrances. When you have a jammy rose, it changes what that fragrance is. And it's nice to smell a sweet rose without the fruit. Or to have the fruit there and not have the jam. Again, it's a deliberate choice. It's a balance. And this is just so gorgeous and so elegant and so wearable. So for rose lovers out there, um, just worth trying if you have the opportunity. Now this is floral in a different way. Beautiful fragrance and floral 
not in your standard sparkly floral way, but really gorgeous and appropriate for spring. Very much worn, again, you can overspray this, but in spring, I don't like to overspray this. I actually don't overspray a lot of fragrances in spring. It's mostly like summer and winter. I bet do like the scent a lot, one of the greatest. I do like to blend this too. You will see this in my layering and blending video. I'm gonna stop holding this because it's very clanky. We have Creed Florally. Now this one is one that actually like is, I'm almost halfway through this bottle. I love this fragrance. This fragrance is one that isn't the most beloved by the House of Creed, but I find myself wearing it so frequently. It just works really well. It smells really nice on the skin. It's really beautiful. It's very feminine. And I just I really, really like it. I ended up getting a sample of it. And then I just I found a really great deal on the bottle. The bottle was not sent to me. I think I bought this bottle from like Rue La La, which is like a discount site where like Nordstrom and other places on their show. I don't know exactly if it's affiliated with Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus, but I think that they, I don't know if they intentionally marked this to like 75 or like 100 bucks. They had it for 100 bucks. And I was like, oh yes, I will pay that because I don't know if it's quite worth the $415 full retail price, but it's worth 100 bucks in my opinion. So I purchased it and then I noticed before, like a few months later, it was like knocked back up to like 250 bucks like on there. So I think I got a really good deal on it, but Overall, I love this scent. I wear it a lot. I think it's really beautiful. Um, it's very easy to wear. It's not like an inspired, gorgeous, timeless classic from the House of Creed. It's definitely, again, in my opinion, this is why Creed doesn't send me anything and that's totally okay. I'm perfectly capable of buying my own stuff. Um, definitely not worth the $450. $415, I believe, is what this is priced at. But again, it is one that is on my greatest of all time because I wear it and I do genuinely love it and I own it. And if you can find a really good deal on it, it's worth checking out because again, it smells really, really nice. But again, price point versus quality versus other fragrances from the house is where it kind of gets a little eh. But again, love it. Gorgeous, really, really pretty. Slendiris from Ducita Parfums. Beautiful fragrance. I'm planning on reviewing this very, very soon because this is, again, a beautiful springtime scent. I just recently purchased this a few months ago. Um, the reason why this doesn't look much worn is because I've had samples of this and I wore it so much, so much last year. I finally purchased a bottle of it. Um, I haven't quite worn it. I think I've sprayed this bottle once or twice, but I've worn through so many samples of it before. So that bottle itself hasn't been touched, but I've worn through like at least four or five Lucky Scent samples poured into a decant and samples, uh, official samples from the house. So I know for a fact that that is one that I wear and I love from the house. Um, so those are the, the floral fragrances. And now we're getting into my top three. And we're just gonna move right into it. This first one was PR. And this could be a summer fragrance. This could also be a fall fragrance. And this house, I need to I purchase the other fragrances. Even though this was sent to me, I do wanna buy the others. This is beautiful. And it is orange blossom from Flower City Fragrances. And the reason why this is more of a springtime fragrance and less of a summertime fragrance, even though again, this could be a summertime fragrance and I might even include it in my summertime fragrance and could easily be even a fall fragrance as the greatest of all time. The reason why this one is such a fantastic fragrance, it's so good. As somebody who lives in Florida, who grew up in Florida, who's driven through orange groves, this is such a beautiful interpretation of orange groves and winds blowing through orange groves, but hot humid winds. <coughs> also, if I sound weird or there's a lot of weird jumps, I am coughing because my nose is congested because the pollen count 
up here. So I'm making a very weird face. It's been miserable. It's been, I'm not usually affected by pollen. It is gross up here with the pollen. It's nasty. So just excuse me. And we're talking about trees. So, hey, but a big old butt. This is a beautiful, almost literal interpretation of what it smells like in an orange grove when it's hot and humid outside and it's warm breezes. A lot of times like the Neroli is like the Amalfi Coast and it's the cool crisp ocean air. No, it's, it's sometimes it's hot and humid and oppressive, but there can be an idealistic, beautifully artistic interpretation of that perfectly translated into a gorgeous artistic fragrance. And that's what this fragrance is. And it's really, really fantastic. So for fra people out there who love those types of fragrances, this is gorgeous and worth checking out. And as a springtime fragrance for people who are orange blossom lovers and neroli lovers, definitely worth checking out one of my top three. Number two, for rose lovers out there, I had to include a rose and I had to have a bee the classic a la rose from Francis Grigion. Now we have Lou a la rose and the one for men and all that other stuff. No, 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 just the classic. This one is beautiful and something I love to wear for spring. I have the hair mist. I have a variety of different options of this. I feel like this needs to be made into a candy. I want to eat this. I, growing up, was the person that would smell the soaps that were floral and sweet. And some people eat those things and they're like, oh, this tastes like soap. And I'm the person that will like eat something that's floral and candy flavored. And I'm like, oh, this tastes like soap. I get very excited. It's like I'm living my childhood best life. Anyway, just ignore that. But this has a sweet clarity to it. Very much like uh, Rose de Grasse. Uh, if you like a la Rose, you'll love this. But what I like about this is there's more of a sparkly clarity to it. And that makes it really easy to wear, especially when summers are humid and gross, because sometimes spring times in Florida are humid and gross, and you do need that crystal clear clarity. And so that's where this one's just beautiful. And again, I love Francis Curzon. So one of my absolute favorite fragrances, and this is a new one to my collection, but most definitely is already one that I'm reaching for and will be wearing a ton, so I know it's already going to be part of this list. And it's Oud Moncherry from Dixic and Sack. This is an Oud fragrance. This is something heavy. This is something dense, but this is something that has a clarity to it. And I'm not going to go too much into it because I'm already looking at an hour and a half and I'm going to have to cut this down so short. And since I just reviewed it, I will link that video below. But if you are looking for something that has a beautifully just gorgeous oud, but has distinctive woods, distinctive brightnesses to it, distinctive uh, florals that again are masculine, just stunning, stunning fragrance. So again, if you're looking for more masculine florals and woods for spring, that one's gonna be gorgeous for you. And it's already gorgeous for me. And I've already worn it and I already am just super obsessed. I love Dixie and Zach the house. The Nightingale is already was on my must buy list. But just for spring, the, the clarity that that fragrance has is going to be absolutely perfect once we start getting like super hot. It's already like the weather here has gone from like the 30s to the 90s, like same day. So like weather here in Gainesville is just really bizarre. But those are my greatest of all time springtime fragrances. Now, I don't know if I'm going to redo this video. I'm not, I'm obviously not going to do this video again next year, but I might redo this video again in a few years. So I'm filming this video in 2023. So um, I'll probably maybe revis revisit this video in a few years, but I've been collecting fragrances for 20 years. I've been oh, over 20 years. I'm going to be 39 this year. I've been collecting fragrances since I was 16. So um, these are pretty much like the fragrances for spring that are the greatest of all time since I was 16. So 
I'm just sharing these with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you agree with any of my picks or if you disagree with any of my picks, um, let me know below. But these isn't so much, this isn't so much of a recommendation video, even though I'm like, hey, check this out. I love it. This is more of me sharing my favorites with you guys. And if your taste aligns with my taste and you want to try something new, then maybe take my recommendations into consideration. But I do have weird tastes and I do live in a very weird place in the world. And by weird, I mean our weather is like walking through Campbell's soup. So again, take this video as more entertainment and less as a reason to go spend your money. Do understand that your opinion is the only one that really matters, not the opinion of some random potato on the internet. But I do hope you enjoyed this video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.